Do you have a question for me? Well, I probably have an answer because I'm pretty opinionated. But if you want to ask me the question, you can leave me a voicemail at 818-949-8536. And I might just answer your question on the show. Again, that is 818-949-8536. Hello? on stage. I am huge fans of two of their husbands and the other husband, I fucking love that guy. <laughs> this is the first time they will be doing a live podcast at a comedy club. Let them hear it alive. Wife of the party, my wife, Leanne Kreischer, Carolyn Luan, and Charles Conte. You guys have an amazing show, ladies. Have a blast. God bless every one of you for coming out. Good night. Bye, babe. Have a good show. Love you. I love you, too. <laughs> hey, everybody. I know. Thank you so much for coming. I'm super excited to talk to these ladies. I can't wait to tell you why. Some of it's probably obvious, but some of it's not. So let me just tell you why. Uh, I'm married to a party, and I've been waiting to find my tribe. I think you may also be married to a party. Yeah. Would that be fair to say? That'd be fair. I That'd think that's fair. accurate. That's a good statement. Uh, I feel like I was on, I don't know if you know this TV show, Lost. Lost is about like this plane crash, and these people on the plane were trapped on this island by themselves, they think. And then all of a sudden, they part the leaves, and they're like, oh my God, there's all these people on this island. That's how I feel like I've been <laughs> since I got married to Bert. I'm the only person. We're just the native villagers. Exactly. Here. Okay. I'm the only one that understands. But I think maybe you're not the only ladies that are married to parties. It's probably very prevalent in the NFL. Would that yeah. be fair? Yeah, it's like in the entertainment world. I feel like we all are. Yeah, just yeah. married to partiers. Yeah. So, um, so I came up with a bunch of questions for you guys, and so did Bert. So I think it might be fun. I think it might be fun if you guess who came up with that question yeah, as game. I asked. It was a good them. game. So let's start with one. Let's see who you think came up with this question. Okay. What kind of animal does your husband kiss like? Bert. Bert. Just yes. Oh, Bert is. Oh, oh, is that the answer or no, also no, no, the answer? Could, could be both. Yeah. He's could a, go either way. Yeah. Both. Um, well, it's funny that you actually asked that question first since my husband actually heard it. You guys know well, maybe. Um, and he said he kisses like a llama eating kibble. <laughs> so that is self-proclaimed. That is his words, not mine. I think he's so romantic. Is that accurate? You think he's accurate? It's pretty I mean, romantic. you know, sometimes. I, I feel like there was a little coaching in the beginning. I'm sorry, babe. <laughs> he's here. Um, yeah. So that's, that's my animal, llama eating kibble. Llama eating kibble. Like at a petting zoo. Got it. What I would doing? say, like, um, a golden retriever puppy that you kind of have to be like, okay, you're, you're not going anywhere, buddy. We're going to be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> but very eager to place. <laughs> That's great. I have a visual aid for mine. It's this bear right oh, yeah. here. See this bear? Tongue out. That's mine. Yeah. A bear. Yeah. Not that sexy. Um... Who's your hall pass? 
I feel um, like I should have a response like immediately ready, but I don't. I think ours is the same, and it's David Beckham. <laughs> ah, wait, yours is the same as whose? As Taylor's. As Taylor's. <laughs> David Beckham. It's pretty good hall pass. As soon as I said it, he goes, that's respectable. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, that's acceptable probably. Yeah, like I told him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if you asked me when I was like younger, I would definitely say Matt Damon, but now I really love Ryan Gosling. Okay. Those are really standard. They're not very interesting, but no? super hot. Matt Damon and Mark Wahlberg, I yeah. think, are the same person, but I don't know why. Like, anytime I see them, <laughs> I don't know who is who. It's just been my Damon. biggest confusion of my life. I wonder why. I have that with Ryan Gosling and the other guy that looks like Ryan Gosling. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, What's his he name? He was Spider-Man, I think, at one point, right? The other... The Ryan? guy that played the guy with the red thing, uh, the thing... Ryan Reynolds? Yes, no, do not look alike. Ryan Ryan same, Ryan same. Ryan same, same to me, same, same. But Ryan's though, right? Yeah, that's true. So oh, confusing. Maybe it's the name. So confusing. So I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. So my, my hall pass, if you're interested, is Thor. <laughs> Understandable. Okay. It's not Chris okay. Hemsworth. Okay. It's Thor. He, he, needs to be a, he needs to be a superhero. If, if yes. you can't grab lightning bolts okay. out of the sky, you're not in. That's it. The hammer. <laughs> yeah. And also the fact that he's fat, then thin, and fat, then thin, huh? I feel like this is interesting. I mean, it's great for Bert that your hall pass is like a mythical creature, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. It will not ever happen. I mean, I have a tiger. Jonah Hill is probably number two then. Who? Jonah, Jonah Hill? Hill? No, 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 he doesn't have a hammer. No hammer, Jonah Hill. Do you think you guys have a type? Did you have a type before you started dating your... Yeah, I'm like, oh, here we go. No, um, looks wise, no, but like definitely free spirited individuals. Like I love, I don't, I'm, I may not even agree with everything you do, which I don't even with my husband. We're very different people. But if you're just a hundred percent yourself and you're confidently yourself, I just eat that shit up immediately. Like that is, you make me laugh, and I don't have to guess who you are. You're gonna show me who you are. I'm like, yeah. you're in. Yeah, That's immediately. Awesome. Yeah, five weeks. Yeah, that was a really good answer. Yeah, that is. Like, because uh, they're not the same. Uh, uh, five weeks you were in? Okay, no, I wasn't actually. Taylor's <laughs> one of the most persistent humans on the planet. When I met him, I was like, I don't, I'm not like, it's like, I feel like no matter what, we were good friends from the beginning because our personalities really line up well. Um, but he's like, I love you. And I'm like, ah, I don't, okay, I, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> like, yeah, like, it's very much like, okay. And then, right, I just started to really like him. And then it's like he caught on to that, starting to like him. He's like, marry me. And I'm like, okay, like, we'll do this. And I think probably six months after we got married, I was like, wow, this is really going to work out. <laughs> How funny. We got married think... two months after meeting. You married two months after meeting. Yeah. So why do you think... It had to happen that way for you. I think that I always say what sold me on Taylor was his ability to always want to be better. Like he was like he was not the type of man I would have been attracted to. He's into a lot of things that I didn't really like, for lack of a better word, respect. Like he was just like big partying. He was all song and dance. It's, he kind of hid behind the idea of who he was. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm not going to waste my time with a mask of somebody. And so I was like, I'm, I really liked being single and I liked myself and I had a great life. And I was like, I'm having fun and I don't need to, you know, waste any of my time with you without like meaning that rudely. And he was like, okay, bet. Like, let's strip me down to my core and build myself up to be the man I want to be. And he just did it like so immediately and so intentionally. And he still does like as soon as he finds an opportunity to be better, he, he works at it. And I think in life, no matter what, like we should always kind of strip ourselves down and rebuild. And he does that so naturally that I was like, that's someone you can build a life with. You know what I mean? Like that's something that the looks go away if life gets hard and we're not having fun anymore. Like that's, that's a trait I can build a house on. And so it was really easy after that. And he's stayed true to it, which I'm really lucky because after two months, you're not really proven anything. So <laughs> I got really lucky. <laughs> So he must have, yeah, he must have just been super authentic and really convincing. Immediately, yeah. And you just knew that we what to, he was selling was authentic. We used to right. laugh because in the first year, he cried the 200 times to my one, and my one was because I watched a video of a seal losing its baby. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, like, very authentically him, and it was impossible not to see. He still is. Like, if you sat down here, you see him out there, that's really him. It's just, like, maybe not the entirety of him, but he will always give you who he is. That's so cool. Yeah. That's really cool. How about you? Do you have a type? I was like thinking about those other things you're saying. Um, yeah. I think when I was young, before I met Will, I thought I had a type. And I think one of the things that I 
always looked for was humor. I need someone to make me laugh, and I feel like every girl says that, but it's just so important because life is, you know, it's long, but it's not that long, so just, you know, have fun, laugh. I need someone who's going to make me laugh every day, and Will does do that every single day. Um, I also thought I liked, like, muscly, like, you know, kind of darker dudes, and I did not really date a lot of people that looked like that, so I guess I never dated people <laughs> that were my actual type. <laughs> um, but now that I'm married to Will, I feel like I'm, like, taking this full circle, and it's really cheesy, but I can't really imagine... I'm like a big energy person too, so he just has this like energy about him too. That's like, it's he he he's just contagious. I mean, yeah. the way he like is so charismatic and um, he makes me laugh, which we you know is important number one. Totally, and he is pretty muscly, so I guess we got that too. <laughs> they are both adorable. Thanks. I'll Thanks. also say too, like I feel like Taylor taught me what my type was. I always say that because I was into more like smaller artistic, honestly, the opposite of what I ended up marrying. Right. But I always say that, like, even with girlfriends who are like, oh, I don't know how to date out there. I was like, you should date something you're not into. Because mm -hmm. maybe he'll teach you what you actually want. Because if you haven't got married or you haven't met the person, your track record's not really, your type's not really working out for you. <laughs> right, yeah. You're trying at the wrong sport. Exactly. Sort of. exactly. I was kind of the same way. I dated guys that didn't look like Bert yeah. and weren't like Bert. And when I started dating Bert, I was like, Two weeks tops, and then we'll be friends forever. <laughs> two weeks tops, that's it. Exactly. And after two weeks, I went, huh, interesting. Like, I've never dated anybody like this, and this is actually kind of working, and also terrifying, because yeah. he's a comic, and so how does that work? Like, I'm just going to sign up to being broke forever. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> We're just, I'm always gonna be managing an apartment building. We're never gonna have any money. And it's just, okay, well, I guess that's what I'm doing. But I had a moment um, when I kind of realized he was what I was all, always looking for. And in that moment, I had a panic attack. I had a big panic attack. And my friend, I called my friend. I was like, I don't know what's happening. I'm, the, I'm super regulated. I don't, I don't, I'm not like that. I called my friend and I was like, I can't catch my breath. My heart is racing. I like keep having to put my head between my legs. I don't know what's happening. I think I'm dying. And she was like, I'll be right there. Came over and I just was pacing my apartment going, I can't do this. This is not for me. I mean, I'm going to be broke forever. And she goes, oh, honey, it's over. <laughs> You're done. He's right for you. You're right for him. Get in the car. We're going to see Finding Nemo. And I was like... <laughs> Okay, and we went to see Finding Nemo, and by the time it was over, I was like, okay, I think I can do it, okay, okay, I think I can do it. And then I actively tried to talk Bert out of it, I, actively. I kept going, you don't want this baggage. Trust me, there's too much going on here. You don't want to deal with it. And he kept going, but I do. And I kept going, no, 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 I don't think you understand. I have this and this and this and this. He was like, give it to me. And I was like, mm, give it to me. Uh, so much like we had a big meltdown break up, break, get back together moment. And at the end of it, he was like, I want all of it. Just give it to me. You got to trust me. I'll take it all. And he picked up a rock and he wrote the date on the rock. We were at Zuma Beach and we still have that rock. Aww. Oh my gosh, we were just in Zuma. That's I decided amazing. to trust him. I decided Aww. to trust because I, I don't think I was very good at trusting. Um, yeah. And it's been pretty awesome. No. So... Anyway, it's so cool to find out how people get together. What I liked about talking to both Taylor and Will was they're, they are what you see is what you get. There's no hidden agenda or anything. They're just really real guys, and they were so very much in love with you guys, but in love with you in a partnership kind of way. That's part of what I meant by... You know, I parted the jungle leaves and went, oh, there's two more like me. Right. Obviously, I have a lot of friends that are married and happily married. But I think it's a bit different when you have this larger-than-life personality, someone who's achieved at such a high level like they have. Uh, to be the partner to that is an interesting and unique relationship, right? Which made me very curious about you guys because they're so clearly in love with you. This show is sponsored by Lumi. Unlike certain other deodorants, Lumi is powered by mandelic acid to control odor in a new way. Lumi delivers outrageous 72-hour odor control everywhere from your pits to your feet and yes, even your privates. In fact, 
It was patients' concerns about private part odor that originally inspired the OBGYN who invented Lumi. Fast forward six years, and her game-changing whole-body deodorant has now earned over 300,000 five-star reviews from people like me who love feeling confident from head to toe. Lumi is baking soda-free, paraben-free, pH balance for safe use below the belt, and you can choose from a variety of fresh, bright scents like clean tangerine, lavender sage, or toasted coconut. I love the Lumi deodorant wipes myself because A, I can just toss them in my gym bag and I have deodorant wipes all the time. B, I have stinky teenagers. And let me tell you about feet of a teenager. Oh my God. So my teenager takes her shoes off as soon as she gets in the car. Guess what I give her? deodorant wipe so she can wipe those stinky feet. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like a mini body wash or hello deodorant wipes and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% off their starter pack. Use code WIFE15 for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code WIFE15 at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Let me ask you this question. Is it easy to apologize? Oh, yeah. I love apologizing because it's immediately on him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm so sorry I did that, babe, but let's talk about you for a second here. No, I am genuinely really quick to apologize. Are you? Yeah, I've got this, and I just have to self-reflect immediately because it's, I think, I came from a family of, like, Neanderthals, <laughs> like, raised in a barn, like, ready, like, my Thanksgiving dinners were, like, fighting across the table, and I, so I was observing a lot, so I was very quick to, like, I, if I reflect on what I've done and I can own up to, as long as I can see it, because there's times where we don't see shit, we're like, no, you're fucking wrong and I'm right and all the things. Mm -hmm. But in those moments where you have those moments of clarity, if I can own up to it, then it really is on them to meet you there. And Taylor hates it. As soon as I say I'm sorry, he goes, no, 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 not yet. You're not sorry yet. <laughs> it's like, and he's like, you kind of want to be in it for a minute, you know what I mean? And so I'm very quick to apologize to a fault almost. Is he? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say he's quick to apologize. He is more like, because I'm quicker than him. Like, in, in, he fucking hates debating me because I will come like I'm ready. And so when he tries to come at me, he's like, just give me a minute. Give me a minute. Like, I'm not ready yet. And let me get my thought out. And then if I say like, he's like, oh, you just want me to be wrong again? Am I wrong? Like, no, it's not about being right or wrong. And then he's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it just is. Exactly. Right? He's just like, so he always thinks it's like almost, and I don't know if it's the athlete in him, but it's like, if he says, I'm sorry, it's like admitting a defeat. You know what I mean? Like, it's mm -hmm. like, and I'm like, that's where you kind of have to get through that. And when you're in the partnership, you're like, we're at, if one of us lose, we both lose. So right. it's like, we got to come to that moon. But he, he's harder to get there for sure. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm quick to apologize, but I'm usually the first to apologize of Will and I. Um, and also I think with apologizing, like to actually mean it, it, it does take some reflection and some thought, like mm. to just immediately try to jump to the next thing and try to get to the next place where you're automatically great again. It's not actually authentic. So Will is actually good about t trying to take some time, whereas usually I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take a breath, but I hate feeling this way, so I'm gonna apologize first. Um, but then eventually we'll get there together. So, yeah, I just have recognized the importance of apologizing because, you know, we're on the same team. And I think it's, it's the quicker you can start to make the problem like your enemy as opposed to each other the enemy is, is usually for the better. I mean, for the health of a relationship at long term. Just harboring those feelings is never going to work. That's great advice to make the problem the, the enemy and not yeah. each other. That's really cool way of looking at that. So I know in my podcast with Will and Taylor, well, it said you guys went to therapy before you got married. A couple therapy. did. How yeah. cool is that? That's so cool. What did you learn from that? I know it really is cool. I'm like, therapy is cool. Like, I never thought I'd be a person be like, therapy is cool because I actually did go to a couples therapy with my ex, a person who is no longer in my life, and I went. We went to one session and I hated it. And he's like, let's keep going, and I'm like, I don't want to. 
Um, so going with Will was like a, it was like a whole, it was like an amazing experience. And I think one of the best re relationship advice tips I've ever received from someone is, so I'm really lucky that I really love my job. I work for this incredible company, but she's like, being in a relationship should feel like work in a way that working at Bar 3 feels like work. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is insane. Like, I act, like wanting to work on your relationship in a way that like fuels you and makes you feel excited and makes you like ready for growth and challenge is like, that was what that session, those sessions were about. Mm -hmm. And we kind of like dug really deep into like a lot of like our childhood. And, you know, I really like, I, I encourage you to like uncover what your partner has gone through in their childhood that they maybe have never talked about because maybe Will doesn't want me to share this. He, he cried when he didn't even think he would cry. He cried talking about things. He, I don't even think he had these feelings. And it was really cool to just be vulnerable together and able, be able to work through things together and understand how we work. I mean... And also, like, why I have insecurities and why ha he feels these ways. And, like, how, just gaining better awareness about myself and himself together. Like, awareness is it. Like, wh I, we wrote down our frame of core values. And, and what the first one is, seek to know yourself and know to be yourself. So just continually seeking to, like, know who I am, even though that's changing, is just so cool. Um, and getting to do with Will was just, like, again, again game changer. Highly recommend. Yeah, that's really cool. I don't, we didn't we didn't do that, obviously. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> Hempsey, we missed that. You don't want this for me. Trust me. I'm too much. Yeah. Oh, sometimes I am too much. But, but I think the cool thing about relationships with people who are really big is that you have to be with someone, I think, or I'm speculating. I don't know you very well. Just met you today. You have to be someone who's willing to kind of go behind a boat with a wide wake and not have any ego about it, right? Because at Taylor Cast the Wide Wake, Will does too. They are. I mean, they have this huge, almost like movement bussing with the boys. It's, a, it's bigger than just a podcast. It's a community. It's kind of a movement. It's really amazing. It's so impressive and cool. Um, what, is it, what is it like? Uh, this is a, kind of a dumb question, but not... What's it like being in that world, but not really being in that world? Because you've never been on the bus, right? <laughs> no. Much no, so we were never dismay. invited, by the way. <laughs> I feel like that's an important right. thing Wait, to on. make. Hold on, hold on. You've never been invited? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. I know, Leon, you're the first one to invite us. Yeah. Are you kidding? I swear. <laughs> that's not okay, yeah. wherever your husband is. That's not okay. That, you should be on the bus. <laughs> I, I would imagine people would be so fascinated. And We've gotten asked to, like, even them, like, Taylor's been like, yeah, you know, he gets asked if we're going to come on, because I think people are interested to see that other side of him, but it's never really happened, but they're so busy, too. Yeah, and, yeah, totally. You know, you never, you never know. They're probably sick of hearing from us, so for them to interview us, <laughs> it's maybe a little different than for you. A little too close to home. Yeah, exactly. They're probably <laughs> a little afraid of what we'll say. I don't know, but... The thing about, at least, uh, talking about my relationship with Bert, it's so public since it's in every stand-up special stuff. I don't <laughs> really need to be public, but yeah. oh well. Oh, the good thing about that is I think it normalizes certain things for, for sure. people. Also, it shows a possibility, right? It's kind of like a public service. That's why, that's the way I have to frame. We just have to the PSAs. Of the yes, it's a PSA. Yeah. Let your husband talk about your booty yeah. on stage and then, you know, I don't know. But yeah. part of me, that's kind of how I had to frame it, is yeah. that Bert talks about me without me having a voice, right? Because I'm not on stage going, actually, because half yeah. of the stuff I'd go, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not exactly how that happened. You have, a voice. you have your own podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's where my voice kind of yeah. lives. So yeah. anyway, what is it like being in that world but not in that world? I met Taylor's mom before I met him. And when we started getting together, I was like, what, what do you think knowing both of us will be like? What, what won't match up? And she said, I'm worrying because I'm worried about you because like I shined on my own. She's like that he's going to shine so much brighter than you. And I was like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, what would that mean? And now I start to see it and you're right. If your ego's involved, then you, you know, you can even get into the world of comparing yourself to your own husband. Like even when I go home, I'm from Canada. If I go home, like people will ask what my husband's up to before they ask what I'm up to. Mm -hmm. And they're so interested in hearing about him. And then I think the way that I've coped with it is basically like, I'm just going to become a bigger fan of him. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and so then I get to like, I'm excited to talk about what he's up to and I'm excited with, you know, 
filling people in on it and I'm, I'm, I'm meeting them there with it because it's coming from such a genuine place and because I can recognize like he's easy to be a fan of. Like mm-hmm. he is, I truly think he's an anomaly of a person and you know, um, I love to show him off. So he's like my little, my little bag to show off or something. Like he's my little accessory at this point. Like how I kind of put it, like I get to kind of show him off to everybody. I'm super proud of him. And he's a trophy husband. Yeah, he's a trophy husband <laughs> by far. Trophy husband. And he just keeps getting better. Like Taylor is like kind of like her husband. He's constantly morphing and his new version is it's fun. I know, Bert was like, you need to ask her, how the hell has he Benjamin buttoning his life? Because That's what I'm saying. He's like getting leaner yeah. and more handsome. Yeah, and, Yeah, sure. mine too. Yeah. Mine there too. You, go. you know what's crazy is though? Mine grew into his mouth. Okay, yeah. <laughs> his mouth was really big. We first started dating and his cheeks get bigger and I go, oh, That's now so your bad. mouth looks okay. <laughs> it's way better. And the beard is helping. That's good, mine, good, Mine good. grew a chin. He didn't have much of one before. <laughs> mine just covers his up. He doesn't even check the scale. He checks the mirror. He's like, how's it looking? I'm like, babe, you definitely. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, uh, That's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's, he's phenomenal. Like, I mean, I think he was excited once, you know, football... He got his second injury and he was like looking at the bright side of things. He goes, I'm going to be skinny for the first time. And he just literally went to sleep and woke up skinny. I'm like, what? I'm like, he's like, he literally, within two weeks, he was like, I'm down 50 pounds. I'm like, shut up. Wow. Yeah. You <laughs> I are hear that. an asshole. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like, is. you keep that shit to yourself. I'm right? Like, yeah, yeah, that was like overnight. That's yeah, such it a was. great way of looking at it, though, to be his fan also, sort of. But yeah. he's actually, you're the most important. This is the way I look at it for Bert, which is similar I'm the most important person besides our kids yeah. in his life, right? Yeah. So h- how amazing is that? That's amazing. Yeah. And that he talks about us on stage is a representation of how important we are. Yeah. So you, I could look at it like, oh, you're invading our privacy or you're, it's too much. But I don't really see it like that. I see it like he loves us so much he can't help it. You Does know, that make sense? Yeah, I've said it before. Yeah. Like, you know, like an arena full of people can admire him, but Taylor's admiration for me fulfills me enough. Like, that's what it feels like. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. he really he really makes me feel like I'm I'm it. Like, I'm the most special person in the world to him. And that's, I guess, at the point, you know, that's all you really need. Like, that's all I really need. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. How about for yeah. you? No, I agree wholeheartedly about just kind of being Will's number one fan. I mean, it's like, a, again, super cheesy, but I really am. And when... A lot of times, like, I kind of have to, like, get used to that. Like, people asking about Will before they ask about me or not really necessarily wanting to shake my hand. They want to shake Will's hand. And that, and I think there's definitely a part of me that there's insecurities there, right? Like, I don't necessarily, sometimes I won't feel worthy of it or I'm like, why does it seem like he's better than I am in all these ways? Because I'm, like, definitely an achiever. Um, so, like, comparing achievements can be tough. But when it all comes down to it, it's just, like, he treats me as his equal. And it doesn't, that doesn't have to be like out in the world. That's just what we know at home. Like we're the lucky ones that get to know like the like real Will and the real Bert. I mean, not necessarily the real one because the real one is out in the world, but that is also like the performing one. That's like the, the person that everyone gets to see. And we get to see like this just like special, more private, like intimate yeah. version of them. Um, so I love being Will's number one fan, but it's also about like how he makes me feel, which is, you know, Huge, and that's 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 kudos to him for totally keeping us like equal on equal footing and partners at home. Yeah, it's yeah. A partnership, right? Oh yeah, it's all a partnership, and partnerships can be interesting. They can be challenging. They challenge your they challenge yourself, or at least mine does. Challenges me to look at my perspective differently, right? Yeah. So it's my. It's easy to think a bird's so drama. Believe me, it's easy to think, Bert's so drama. But sometimes I have to go, but what is the drama really? Like, yeah. what, what is it like to be him and have to sell 17,000 tickets for one night show and not sleep and be on a plane day after day? And I'm complaining because I haven't seen him in a couple of days. Yeah. You know, I, well, I mean, I need to regulate myself there a little bit. So I know that both your husbands had a different transition out of the NFL, right? One, uh, Taylor was more injury, sort of, related. I don't think he's technically out of the NFL right now. Is he not? No, technically. Right. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Anything yeah. can happen. Yeah. So Is he a cheerleader? What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no official retirement yet. Oh, okay. He's just 250 pounds. He's basically. paused. Yeah. yeah, he's paused he's right now. He's on pause. Yeah, he's just 250 pounds. <laughs> right. Well, I can run. Uh, but Will is out of the NFL. Or is he a cheerleader also? No, he... 
<laughs> it's funny you say that because I was a cheerleader. Yes, I know. <laughs> yes, he. I think. I think he retired. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you. It's officially issued. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what was that transition like in your house, in your marriage, in your life? What was that like? Was it? Because we have something in my life called re-entry, right? When Bert's been gone a long oh, yeah. time. Oh, you know about re-entry? Oh, you have that yeah. too? Oh. It's not Every fun, is it? The first couple weeks of off-season, I'm like, welcome back, buddy. The world doesn't revolve around you anymore. Like, change that diaper. Get into yes. that life. Like, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It sucks. Oh, yeah. Right? It's re-entry tough. is terrible. Because in this world, really, life revolves around them. And all respect to the careers that they have, because at the end of the day, their careers give us what we have. And like... It, I'm nothing but thankful for them. But as the individual, it's like, it's hard for them to also reintegrate into real life because mm-hmm. they're not tr- it's not real life for them when they're in their careers. Like their arenas full of people or people, the admiration they get from people. And I'm like, your dad and your, and your tailor here, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, welcome back. Like, you know, wake up. <laughs> yeah, get up. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't have a game on Sunday. I don't care anymore. Get yeah. up. <laughs> you know? I know, it was the same. Reentry for us would be like, Hey, babe, how about a coffee? And I'd be like, hey, babe, how about you get your ass up exactly, and get yourself a coffee? Exactly, exactly. I am not your assistant. And exactly. He, he goes, oh, 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 and I'm like, yeah. I don't really care. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Man, I am yeah. like doing everything over here. Exactly. And you want me to stop and get you a coffee? Yeah. No. Yeah. You're, you're actually at drop off and pick up today because you asked me for the coffee. So don't exactly. do that again. Exactly. Yeah. Right? For That's sure. Similar? For similar? Sure. No? Yeah. 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 No, similar. yeah. Off season, the first month of off season was like, because we never did therapy, but I literally said, like, I don't know how open you are to therapy, but if we went to therapy for the minute off-season hit, I really think it would save us some, some time because the re-entry was always a thing. But I had empathy for it because I'm like, I get it. The whole world revolves around you in those moments, but, like... Snap out of it. Yeah, I'd leave that shit yeah. at the door. It's kind of like, come home. Like, Same. Yeah, yeah re-entry is tough at our house. I luckily had a girlfriend uh, whose husband was a big movie producer and would be gone for like three months at a time and she suffered re-entry also. Yeah. So we would call each other and go, this motherfucker. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I hate this motherfucker. Yeah. And I'd go, I hate him too. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. want to come over for dinner? Yes, yeah. we'll be over. <laughs> but yeah, it's nice to have a partner that you could just, that just totally understood what you're talking about. For sure. Were you guys friends? I, I don't know. Here's what I don't know. I don't know the timeline of when everybody got together. I know that you were with Taylor mm-hmm. before Taylor no, met I Will? Think, yes, before, before Taylor, Taylor and Will, Will yeah, yeah, I was yes. with Taylor. I met Will first, because you were still living. Yeah, I lived in DC, DC, and Will moved here in 2018 and met you guys. Yeah, and so Will didn't really have a home base, so Taylor home. gladly <laughs> forced him into our home base. <laughs> Yeah. When Taylor loves somebody, it's very much like, no, I love you. I don't care how you feel about me. Like, you're coming over. And then eventually you're like, wow, I actually love this guy, too. Like, it's, he, he sees it first, always. And I think he saw it first in Will, too. And Will would come over the time with a guy named Mike Campanero. And they were so much fun. They brought so much joy. We had a one-year-old. And so he kind of be, he was Uncle Will right away. And Charo was this, like, phantom that we'd hear about sometimes. <laughs> and, like, we get stories about. And, like, we'd kind of, like, vicariously hear about through Will. But I got to, sometimes it was just me, Will, and Taylor, and we'd hang out and have the best time because w- Will and I would be like, dude, this guy. And he'd be like, yeah, well, he was late yesterday. I'm like, yeah, he's always fucking late. And then we'd always go into it about, like, basically how to, how to have a relationship with Taylor. If we, me and Will could probably write a book about it. I think it, you guys actually. are both married to Taylor. We are yeah. both married to yeah. Taylor. I think that's even what they said, but it's true. <laughs> yes, like, it is. That's what they said. There <laughs> were some vital times in our life where I swear Will and I had a weekly phone call. <laughs> That we told about Taylor later in life, we were like, listen, Will and I have been really working behind the scenes on this one, and we really think that this is what's going on with you. <laughs> we rolled our first sleeves and got yes. shit done. You guys are like his exactly. intervention every week. Uh, no, and they did talk about that on the podcast, that you and Will would talk about Taylor in front of Taylor, and Taylor oh, yeah. was like, hey, 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 I'm right here. You were actually probably me, due for one. <laughs> <laughs> it's overdue. Time. Yeah. But Charo kind of, when Charo came in, it was like, we had like a pause in life where Will was around for a while. And then when Charles came in, life got really busy again. So it was like a season. A, exactly. Season, yeah. But even since then, like two yeah, kids yeah, and yeah. all those things, like we've never had the same downtime that I got to know Will in. So we always joke around that my, mine and Charles' time is going to come where like we get to bond as much as we got to bond with them. But we've never had that moment because then she had her kids and it's way more interruptive of a mom's life. You know what I mean? Like when you have young kids and we've both been kind of bouncing back and forth between that phase. Mm-hmm. 
You have young kids. You're two? Yeah, she just turned two. I just have one, yeah. Six and... Seven, yeah, turning seven and turning four. Okay. And we're There's talking about number three right now. Oh, my God. I know. That'd be should exciting. I do it? Yes. <laughs> Are you sure? Do you, yes. Should we go back and forth? We're like, we should try Different this one. We're like, what about next one? I have two because yeah. my second one was the Tasmanian devil. Oh, okay. yeah. She is here somewhere. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she showed up and I she was like, like the Tasmanian devil. I'm done. No, she's, she's lovely now. <laughs> but like walking at nine months, mm. she put everything in her mouth. Yeah. She was climbing and jumping off things. I just kept having to apologize to Georgia. I go, so sorry. I got to keep this one alive. So sorry. I got to keep this one alive. I'm so sorry. And then Bert wanted a third, and I was like, someone will die. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's one of the five of us will be dead. I don't, I'm not sure who it's going to be, but I cannot do it. Isla was a lunatic. She still has lunatic tendencies, but... I really think that's second born. At 17. What's that? I think that's a second born It thing. may be. Yeah, and I don't know if it's like the first born you're so on top of, and the second born, like, just... Can't, I don't even know, but the second born... First either. born's like, well, I'm the best parent in the world. Check this kid out. And the second born, you're like, don't look at them. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine was born with a mullet. That should have been my first sign. She had that was no hair one. and a full mullet. Like, yeah. visits in the front, party in the back. And I was in trouble from go. She was... So crazy that I was like, there's no way I can have three. But yeah. now that they're older, and also when right. I had two, right, <laughs> nope. that shop is closed. <laughs> there are cobwebs growing in every corner, if you know what I mean. Um, no, now I, I really am sad about it. But at the time, we were so broke. Mm. And I was working, I was managing an apartment building full time without a nanny. So I only had a nanny for the three days that Bert was on the road. Mm -hmm. And Bert would ask me for like, hey, can I get 50 bucks to go play poker? And I go, we don't have 50 bucks. And he's like, no, 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 just go to ATM and get 50 bucks. I'm like, ha, 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 ha. We don't have $50. I can't do that. So we couldn't really afford help for me. Yeah. And I literally thought, some, I thought it was all I could do to keep Isla alive yeah. for like two yeah. and a half years. And then by then I was like, I'm so exhausted. And Bert was on the road. He started uh, touring when Georgia was three days old. So he's gone Wednesday to Sunday every week. Mm -hmm. it was, it was, I just I couldn't do it. It's I knew, I knew yeah. my limitations. Yeah. And, uh, but now I go, oh, we're going to be an empty nester in September. And I could, I could have one more. I could yeah. have had one more. but that, That's what we always outside. talk about is like having the table a little longer, you yeah. know, like because obviously we're just getting to freedom at like four and seven. They're mm -hmm. so independent and they're in a really cool phases um, to go backwards. That's why we keep kind of backing out because like we should try this. No, nah, not this one. No, 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 no. This one. No, 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 no. We'll but try you're it still September. so young though. Well, you're I had really my first young. kid at 23. So like I've had. Yeah, you're like, young. You're yeah, young. exactly. Young. So I'm like, well, why wouldn't we try for another one? But the issue is, is if this one comes out a girl, my, husband, my husband's been very vocal <laughs> about it. And so I'm like almost afraid. <laughs> I'm like, we're going to like pack the kids up and move. If the thing, like if it comes back a girl, we're just, he's going to come home and we're all going to be gone. She's going to burn just, the house down. Exactly. Yeah, the whole house. But he really wants that experience of having that boy. And I always laugh because my daughters are very tall, like very tall for their age. And I'm, I'm always like, they're going to be like six, seven shot putters or something. <laughs> and then I'm going to have a boy and he's going to be five, nine, like ballerina. <laughs> it's like a complete karma for how badly he wants that boy. He's forcing it into the planet, exactly. right? That's great. That's great. What was my original question? Because, oh, 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 what was the transition like out of the NFL? <laughs> that what was right, that a long like? time ago, I don't know right? how we got it. It was. We'll go back to it. We'll go back to it. We'll get back to it. Um, for Will. I either, yeah. Oh, yeah, I honestly, I thought we were kind of talking about, like, re-entry after the season, but then, like... We can do that, yeah. re-entry. I don't know. know. I'm, like, I'm thinking more about, like, transitioning out of the NFL. And I think for, in our house, like, I was probably more worried than Will was. Because, oh, yeah. I, like, I think he had this, like, he had this plan in his head, and he had bussing going, and he was like, I have set this up, and I have a plan, and I'm, like, more into bussing than the NFL right now, so I'm good. And I was like, oh, my gosh, his whole identity is being a football player. He's literally been playing football since he was three like, how, like, I'm trying to, like, put myself in his shoes. Like, this is going to be insane. Like, you're playing football for 30 years of your life, and now all of a sudden you're not playing football anymore. So I was, I think I was more stressed than Will was, um, which just kind of goes to show that he, he's just really even keel. He, he wasn't, he was, he was ready. So in our house, I think it was, it was pretty smooth, again, because 
you guys know, was there year 10? Was there year nine? Was there year eight? I don't, I don't know. I think it was more like a couple like games here and there and it was just kind of like an easy transition because then he wasn't gone a lot anyway. So um, not super crazy, thankfully. That's good. Yeah, I know. I think that's like the, that's like the rare story. Yeah, that's I mean, super healthy. He was healthy. kind of like in control of his destiny, mm -hmm. whereas some people kind of like get the rug pulled out from under them, which is, yeah. it just, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, especially if an injury happens, right? I would imagine that would be really hard. Yeah, that was more our up. story. Yeah. yeah. My husband's a little bit more emotional than Will. <laughs> 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 and he copes with it a little differently. Mm -hmm. um, we, almost similar, kind of had a slower transition. It wasn't just immediate. But Taylor got his first injury, um, and that was, like, he was invincible before that in his own mind. So he had to kind of cope with that. And so my husband was the happiest, bubbliest, like, like a little boy. And then he got his first injury, and he couldn't run, and he couldn't really walk. And he all of a sudden, like, saw that he could, could get hurt, like his invincibility was shattered. And so that was the first time he kind of coped with almost, like, being low and the way he coped with it is he made an alter ego so every time he was sad he had an English accent <laughs> <laughs> and he called it what yeah and did he, he called, have a different name Jerry Jerry and a different hairstyle oh and so my if I god came, if I, I came love in the him so much if I came Are in the room kidding? and just saw his hairstyle that way I was like okay <laughs> Jerry's here so Let's clear up for Jerry. And me and Jerry story? fought a lot. I bet. Jerry called me some very British names oh in the my book. You guys God. can imagine what name they used freely, which Taylor said was not him, it was Jerry. And they oh. used that word over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we eat different ways of going about it. But, um, <laughs> but still, even when he's sad, he makes it fun. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like that. He just can't help it. But he, that slowed him down. So then he obviously didn't play a full season went back and then um, his knee never stopped bothering him ever it never stopped bothering him and never he was never he could never get the same power out of it like it was just but he tried everything I mean he basically when he hurt his leg he disappeared mm -hmm. like I just had my my second was three months old and I swear when she was like one she's like who, who's this man that comes in every once in a while I don't I don't know who this is might be Jerry yeah is this Jerry might or yeah, Taylor. Exactly. not sure he had another one <laughs> I can't remember, but he'd he had more than one alter ego. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> clinically he could be diagnosed with something. I'm not 100 percent sure, but he multiple personality disorder yeah, for sure. <laughs> he'd split the hair down the middle, and I don't think this one talked. <laughs> but he would just kind of stand in the, like it would be like I'd be sitting here and I'd look what? over and he'd be like half around the corner like this, staring at me. So I'm like, concerned. I wish I remembered what his name was. I can't remember now, but. There was many of them. Um, <laughs> you never had to guess how he felt, though. It was like, oh, okay, yeah, Taylor feels a little uncomfortable right now. That's whatever his name was. And, oh, he's sad. There's Jerry. And, yeah, there was all sorts of them. But he just dedicated his whole life to try to get better. And so, but it, it was a good lesson for him to say, no matter how hard you try something, it won't work out. You know what I mean? So right. he went back, and then he, he re-injured it, or, or would, never really was uninjured. I don't really know the correct way of telling that story. But, um, and... So with those two injuries, it wasn't like he was playing full seasons back to back. It was like he kind of had these moments of being pulled out. So he had to cope with that the first time he was injured of not playing with his friends, like watching them. I think they went to the playoffs that year and like you, he's so happy for them, but he's so sad for himself. And yeah. he's like, because his identity, being with the Titans and like being there when they're three and 13 and then being there when they're going to the playoffs, like he got to be a part of that and he wanted to be a part of it so badly to the point where like that was a part of Taylor. You know what I mean? Like, kind of going off what Charles said, is like they do have their identity is like hiding behind 77. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. he was 77 for so long, and those injuries kind of allowed him to distance himself from that and discover who he is without that jersey on. And I think that was a blessing as much as it was one of the hardest things we've ever gone through. But like, that really helped with the point of like, okay, now I have to kind of walk away. You know, mm -hmm. like, I kind of have to let go of the Titans' journey. And, mm -hmm. And um, it came with its, it had its silver linings for how it happened to us. It wasn't again like, it wasn't like he was like ready and willing to play and they said no. You know what I mean? Like it's like he, he was, for, his hand was forced, but in a way that he was more ready for it than ever. And honestly, busting with the boys was a huge blessing to be able to have some form of a purpose because some of these guys have nothing after. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, in life, trying to find the silver lining in all of it, we had a lot. Like with every, all his accolades, all his accomplishments, everything was easy to focus on. So that's pretty much what we tried to do, but that's awesome. it, it was an adjustment. 
Right, it had to be. I mean, no, how yeah. could it not be? Something you played since you were three or however yeah. old Taylor was. It's your whole life. Yeah. I, I, to be, to perform at anything at that level, acting, you know, yeah. carpentry, anything that you perform at a high level, once it goes away, it's got to be a big adjustment. Yeah. This show is sponsored by Better Help. It can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin. Boy, isn't that the truth? Especially with social gatherings picking up after the winter. What's the right amount of socializing for you? And how do you recharge? I know I recharge. I am an introvert, but I'm highly social. So I've got to like take some time to myself. Maybe you thrive around people or maybe you need more time alone like me. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. I, I figured out that Bert and I were very different a long time ago in that he charges his battery with people and I charge my battery by going off by myself. It was so important that we figured that out about ourselves and could communicate that to each other so we could take better care of ourselves and of each other. Therapy can help you do exactly that. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash wife today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash wife. When they told you about starting Bussin' with the Boys, what did you think? Oh, I was pumped. You were? Yeah. Well, Will had been talking about starting a podcast for a long time. He loves writing down his goals and he wrote down start a podcast, you know, a long time ago. And when he came home, it was like, I think I'm going to do it, and I think I'm going to do it with my friend Taylor. I was like, great, love it, go for it. How can I help, you know? It, um, I was really excited about it, so. it's awesome. I mean, he just did it, somehow. I think Taylor, oh, they wanted to call it The Den, I remember, <laughs> and I was like, mm. And then they wanted to call it Bustin' with the Boys, I was like, mm. <laughs> They remind me of how wrong I was, I'm like, Okay, fair. But um, no, they, when he came home and told me, he was still so focused on football. Football was always number one. So I was like, when do you have time for this? Like, when are you actually going to do this podcast thing? And luckily for Will, if it wasn't for Will, there would have been no fuss with the boys, at least with Taylor in it, because Will did everything. And Taylor got to show up for one hour a week and just show up for the podcast. So um, it was definitely at the beginning, I don't think Taylor ever saw it getting it as big as it was. Mm -hmm but I think Will did. And I said, like, there's so much groundwork that Will put in on it that mm -hmm. Taylor, like, Taylor brings his own stuff to the table. It's not like he brought nothing, yeah. but Will was the legs of all of this, mm -hmm. you know? And then when things started to slow down with football and Taylor started realizing, oh, like, I, it was an outlet for him too, um, is when he kind of started re-engaging. Re but they had, the relationship they had and the understanding they had um, is why Bustin' with the Boys is what it is. But when they Absolutely. first told me, it was, he was very much like, this is going to be more just like for fun. And this is like, it's not going to take enough time away from football or from the family. And Will allowed that to be really like, I don't think Taylor would have been able to be anything in Bustin' with the Boys if it wasn't for Will doing what he did. Right. They're a great partnership. Oh, yeah. They're a great team. Yeah. It's really cool to see their friendship. I think their friendship's inspiring. I, when I listen to their podcast, I feel like they're my friend. And oh, I yeah, don't everyone. know about hunting ducks. They're talking about hunting ducks. And I was like, I don't know how to hunt for ducks. I don't ducks. think Taylor knows about hunting ducks. But I love <laughs> I, the well. one episode of, they were talking about hunting ducks for, I don't know, I don't remember why or the context of it. But I thought, well, I feel like I'm in the room with them. Like, they're I my friend. I think that's like what people gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. and, and it's also really cool, like, the, friend, the friendship you're talking about because they are, like, best friends. But people always say, like, don't go into business with your friends. And, like, clearly they did just that. And so um, just like watching them learn together and like how to work together, but also be friends and like how like you have to wear these different hats. It's I'm, I'm sure it's provided like lots of growth for both of them, which is really cool to just kind of like be there for. Yeah, they're good yin and yang. Seem like it. Yeah, like if they're both emotional or reactive people, it probably wouldn't be there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's like I think they both bring out the best in each other mm -hmm. and they both have like the perfect communication abilities of one another. That's awesome. Yeah. That's thanks to us. And, but I really think that, yeah. <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> so I really think that if Will died tomorrow, and I really hope that never oh happens. God. Yeah, right? We love <laughs> to have Hold on. Hold on. Like, we're taking, taking a hard right here. But if Will died tomorrow, I really think on his headstone would say everybody's best friend. Aw. Like, that really is, like, 
Like I really, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming Taylor's for sure one of his best friends, but it's a, com it's a competition. <laughs> <laughs> like I really feel like everybody's like, no, Will's my best friend. No, right. Will's my. I really think that like, if we said Will's best friend, all gather at this event, there'd be 50 people and they'd be all confused. What a compliment. <laughs> That's an amazing compliment. He seems yeah. that way no, to me. Really I don't know you guys. Yeah, it was wild at we, our wedding. The groomsmen, there were, I think there were like eight or seven of them. And Will did not tell them the order they were standing in until the day of. <laughs> oh my God. Because he knew that it would cause like strife and like issue. And there was actually people like upset. I'm like, this is insane. This is like, my friends need to do this. Like, they, they care about Will that much. They need to stand as close as possible to him on his wedding day. So we had to do it by height. I think it, <laughs> that's perfect, that's by height. Funny. That's really I, funny. I feel like there's also like a, two different kinds of personalities that meet because even for me, like Taylor had 10 groomsmen and I'm like, I just met you, but you want to be my bridesmaid? Like I need, I've got like three actual friends and I need at least seven more to really even this out. Seriously, like it was, and I feel like those people find each other. You know what I mean? Like, it's just funny. Like Charo and I are very different, but we also share something similar because our boys share something similar and there yeah. is this like little yin and yang to it. You know? Totally. And even with them, there is like, he's the more emotional one. I think that's why Will and I get along so well because we're just like we're the least emotional I don't, are you emotional i don't even know <laughs> it's funny because on the podcast with you will literally said that his least favorite thing about me is i'm emotional which i am okay i mean yeah. i don't know if i'm like, like multiple personalities yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering i was like wait are you emotional i should see before i but it is funny how like we all kind of share something together and that's how I, I'm like okay well it makes sense why you guys are together because like yeah. there is something in all of us that we all have similarly as much as we are different yeah we always I, we in my house say there's a Bert and a Leanne in every relationship yeah so <laughs> someone may be a little bit of a hybrid hybrid but you're predominantly either Bert or Leanne and what do you so, think I am I think yeah. you're Leanne well, because yeah. there is no way Taylor is Leanne <laughs> I would agree <laughs> No, you may be more Bert than Leanne, but of the two, you're the Leanne. And I don't hybrid. know about you and Will. Oh, I don't I'm know. I'm tricky. Uh, you're, you're, you guys are tricky, too. You're a little tricky. I don't, yeah, because I don't really know what you mean. Will is definitely Leanne of Taylor for and sure. Will. That's for sure. So, but I don't know about the two of you because no, I've sure. been told you were emotional. Uh, I've been, remember he said that's his least favorite part was that you're emotional? Bert Kreischer is emotional. I am, as I've been told, dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> I am okay, so not emotional. I am like, let's matter of fact this to death. Yeah. And then he's like, <laughs> you don't listen to me. I'm listening again. Yeah. Can yeah. you stop talking? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. TBD. I guess your theory is not true. I guess I'm not. Or maybe maybe he's like a he switch ships. hitter in yeah, yeah. baseball. Maybe yeah, Will is yeah. Will is Leanne with Taylor, but Bert with you. I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean they're both super even keeled that I've seen, but now I'm learning that she's emotional. <laughs> Maybe she's not emotional. That was his least well, favorite. Yeah, like it was claim. interesting because in therapy, I feel like there was so much uncovered in therapy, which is kind of funny that we're talking about. This is like three years ago, but the the therapist would always be like, "Let's just sit in your emotion," and I'm like, "No, let's figure out how to figure it out." Yeah. Like, I want to get to the next thing. Like, I want to. I don't want to feel this way. This this way I'm feeling is irrational and it is in, is insane. It's not insane. It's just it's val. It's normal. But <laughs> yeah, um, but why I was like, let's get there? to the solution. She's yeah. like, no, let's stay in your feelings. So I have been actually trying to stay in my feelings more. <laughs> After this podcast, she's like, I'm not emotional anymore. <laughs> maybe, I need to, maybe I need to get out of that. It's, it's tough finding a balance because you do have to honor the way you feel. Totally. But at the same time, like you can't live in like drown in them. That's it's not going to work either. Come sit with so. me. I'm dead inside. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to stay in our feelings at all. I'm, I'm like you. I'm like, let's figure out why we feel this way and, and yeah. get out of yeah. it. Yeah. Or move on. Let's find the problem, the root. Let's get to the for root sure. and rip it out. I also think that's a part of getting older. Like my space for things now, like Taylor and I talk about all the time, like things that we used to talk to death or things that we thought mattered, like it'll come up and we're like, ah, right? Like, well, that and you have a shorthand. Yeah, I mean, Bert just... and I have been together 23 years. So at a certain point, you just start, uh, things matter less. For things sure. matter differently. And you have a shorthand. Like we have, we have, um, we started saying we're at that place again. Oh. So let's pause. 
right? Yeah. So it, let's just take a walk because we're at that place again. Yeah. And we've gotten better at saying, this isn't actually about you entirely. This is like a trigger, but I still have all these big feelings. So help me separate them. And so we've, we've started like helping each other separate them because things that happen in your childhood, you know, trigger you and you go, my emotions are way too big for what's happening right here, mm -hmm. but I still have them. Mm -hmm. Like I'm still having these big feelings. Help me, help me, you know, yeah. but it wasn't always like that. You know, you have to figure each other out. And we didn't go to therapy. We're not quite we that either. smart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we haven't been in a while, so. I, I feel like you become a safe place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so like Taylor's big emotions, which are so big, which I'm sure anybody can figure out. But when he comes home and he tries to put them on me, I feel like I've gotten to the point where I'm like, this actually has nothing to do with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, mm, no. Like you just kind of put like a hard stop on it. And I feel like that will save so much time on being like, let's in, let, let's separate here. And like he said, I, I listened to your guys' podcast yesterday just to see, because I'm like, what do you say about me? This will determine what I say about him. <laughs> Don't that worry, I'm going to ask you some of the same yeah. questions I yeah. asked them, because that's only fair. Yeah, and he, he said, um, what did he say? What was I just saying? I don't even remember now. What did he say? Hey, uh, what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? Was what, it, you I, what's going on? No, you yeah. were talking about how he comes with the really big emotions. You're like, mm, that's not me. Oh, yeah. That's like you. he, I don't remember. You have but, emotional maturity is what he said, right? Yeah, he always says that. He loves your that. emotional maturity. He yeah. always says that, which I'm almost like, comparatively. <laughs> 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 I'm joking. I'm totally joking. I give him a hard time. But no, he is very, very, <laughs> like, actually, his communication style, his emotional maturity, not to overuse the word, is really impressive. So I'm definitely giving him a hard time there. But I have no idea what I was going to say. So I'm hoping that so I'll just filibuster question. this until it's over. <laughs> So, um, what is your favorite part? Since that was the question I asked them, what's the favorite part of Taylor? What's your favorite part of Charo? What's your favorite part about Will? What's your favorite thing about Will? My favorite thing about Will. Um, you, if he makes you laugh, like, you think he, Will is funny, and he, he actually is funny. Like, he gets me, he makes me laugh, like, out of the blue. I will, I will be, like, in a bad mood, and he will make me laugh, so... That, that, I mean, that, that's just kind of like a side note. My favorite thing about Will is that he is like ambitious to the point of like delusion. Like he, <laughs> um, he doesn't, he writes things down, goals that I, I personally could like never dream of. And he just like, I'm gonna take a step by step and I'm gonna make this happen. Like in some ways, like he, does, he never stands in his own way. He is, he just dreams big, but not, but, but not like unreasonably so. Like he's just like, I'm gonna do this and I'm worthy of this and I'm capable of this. And, and I'm like, that is amazing. Because I, I, I think for me personally, I definitely have like feelings of unworthiness and I think maybe a lot of people do. Um, and in some ways it's like self-sabotage, right? Like I'm just like standing in my mouth. I believe that my capacity is like less than it is and will just like, he believes that his capability and his capacity is like endless. And it's really inspiring to watch and also just to be like, I'm on this ride with you and maybe I can like set my goals higher too. So I mean like his podcast is truly like a testament to that. So um, that's probably my favorite thing about him. He's just like delusional in his dreams. And maybe that's something you share too, but like being with somebody in this lifestyle and like when they go chase their dreams is contagiously inspiring. You know what I mean? Like it's like, I feel like I've dreamed bigger since meeting him. Like mm -hmm. kind of just to echo yeah. what you're saying. And I'm like, I wonder if that's universal with people who are chasing their dreams and achieving these things. That's like, you almost feel like it motivates you mm -hmm. to keep reflecting on like, well, what do I want to be? What do I, well, what's that going to look like for me? And, and, and chase those things when you see someone do it. I feel like. Um, yeah, why not me? Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm saying that. Yeah. Why not me? Yeah. Well, this podcast is an exact re uh, representation of that. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Because yeah. uh, Brian Dorfman, who's club this is brian's club called me and said how about you do a live podcast and my immediate reaction was like nope <laughs> yeah same 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 same, same. same. Nope. same for us <laughs> to be yep. here so. nope not gonna do that no way i don't want the responsibility of selling tickets why would anybody buy a ticket i just started getting this all this negative space and i stopped myself and i went bert kreischer does not think this way about me yeah. so why am i thinking this way about me 
Bert, because I told Bert that Brian called me and Bert was like, oh, do it. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be amazing. You have to do it. You should do it. You should totally do that. <laughs> that literally totally. sounds like him. You got to do it. Leanne, you're going to do it. Here's what we're going to do. If the tickets aren't selling, I'll just do a post. I'll just do a post. I'll take my shirt off. It'll be fine. You're going to be fine. Just do it. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. And oh my God, I was so nervous and uncomfortable and and worried and concerned. And I just decided to do exactly what you said. Then I'm going to take a page out of his book yeah. and try to, to dream a little bigger, to, yeah. to think a little broader, you know, because life's short and, and I and could always cancel. And, <laughs> yeah, and I, I, think, that. I think when you see them fail and how they recover from their failures, that's the part that also like inspires me where I'm like, oh, it's not that bad. Like you survive it. You know what I mean? Like, I think to be where they're at, you can't be afraid of failure. No. And like, that's the fear of failure is the first thing that pops in. Because even when you ask us, I'm like, who cares about what I have to say about Taylor? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, that's your first instinct. Like, who's going to want to come and sit and listen to me? You know what I mean? Like, Mm kind of just to echo what you're saying again, but why not? You know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't you go try? Like, if why not try to throw it at a wall? Like, who knows what door it will open? Because half the time I've seen him be like, I'm going to go do this, that fails, but it actually leads him into this direction that he could have never predicted. Mm -hmm. And he would have never got there if he didn't try. So like that part too is kind of like, sure, like just say yes. Like, why not? Like, you know, what do you have to lose? That and I think everybody is special in their own way, right? Mm -hmm. Every person is special in their own way. Um, I really do believe that. But you're special in other ways, I'm sure, but your relationship is also quite special, right? So I think when you share the special parts of yourself with the world, it inspires people to find their own special parts, right? And to make those special parts in themselves bigger and greater. And it's part of being in the community that is this world, is that when you don't shine, then people don't get the opportunity to see where they can shine, yeah. you know? So I think your relationships are so special and unique and, and also normal and regular yeah. at the same time. Yeah, for sure. That, that it's really cool to talk about how you are with these guys that everybody or a lot more people in the world may know, right? To know that the way you are with each other, to go to therapy early, to be honest and really working on your relationship is is achievable and also so fulfilling Mm -hmm. and brings you so much prosperity. Prosperity doesn't necessarily have to be financial. It can be emotional. It can be, you know, fill in the blank for what prosperity means for you. But I think it's very powerful to talk about your relationship. I really appreciate it. Um, But favorite favorite? and least favorite. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I would say my, I have a lot of favorite things about him. Just so you know, the simple, he makes everything fun. He's my number one fan, all of those things. But I think my real favorite thing about him as an individual is Taylor is this like six, seven, used to be 310 pounds. I think he's like 260, something, I don't even know. <laughs> um, pound guy. And he's got like tattoos and he's got all these things and he has the success and he had the career and all those things. But he's one of the least intimidating people in the world when you meet him. Mm. Like, it's like, even like with how he approaches things, like he doesn't actually, off the field, on the field, he's a complete psychopath. And it always kind of blew my mind. I'm like, what is that? Like, in person, I think he'd rather me fight his battles. Like, if there's someone being rude to him, his immediate reaction is to dismember it. He doesn't even really recognize it. And his, he, all the way down to his voice. Like, even when you hear him talk, you're like, oh, that's not that scary. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's actually one of the most approachable people and he makes people feel comfortable. And he, like, I feel like, like kind of like you said, when you sit with him, like he's so eager to make sure you, he makes friends with everybody. Like it, it doesn't matter if you're his Uber driver or if you came to fix our toilet or whatever. Like he, if he likes you, he'll literally become friends with you to the point where he used to give his number out to everybody he met, everyone, everybody he met. And then he had to change his number a lot because everybody he met had his phone number. So then he started giving out my phone number to everybody he met. And I'm like, okay. I'm like getting this guy like, hey, it's so nice to meet you at the airport today. Like. Here's this picture I was telling you about about my dog from when I was a kid and how it's kind of like your dog from when you were a kid. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, so that part of him, that almost like purity of him, yeah. I just, 
I treasure, you yeah. know, it's like that, that's the, the part of him that I think I get to love and like I get to know mm -hmm. the most. And so like that, that piece of him I'll just love forever is his ability to just become friends with anybody and just be so welcoming, Aww. I guess. Yeah. What's your least favorite? Okay. Um, that sometimes I think he forgets that the world doesn't revolve around him mm -hmm. in those moments. <laughs> just on the opposite side of things. No, but really like the only time me and him really have those clashes is because he forgets, you know what I mean? That, mm -hmm. that the reality he lives in isn't reality. Mm -hmm. And so it's like that we've talked about it before and, and I don't think he sees it, I don't think he means it in a meaner way, but like I think he gets caught up, which I don't know how you don't, I'm sure in one way or another, I actually don't know if he'll ever would. He seems so genuinely him, but with like, it seems like sometimes he doesn't realize that like, he doesn't even see it like, the coffee thing or if it's time to do something, it's like he's almost surprised he's got to do it. And I'm like, nobody, let's go. Yeah, right, like, well, right, it's right, right. time to go. Come and on now. Yeah, so that would be, but those are also kind of rare and in between, but those are our, my biggest, like, quotes with him, which I think comes as a side note to this lifestyle. Right, probably. Yeah. Because they're so focused on themselves to be this high achieving, right? I mean, they have to be. They're like the, the thing that's making it happen. Right. It's almost like they become a thing in the world, but they also become a thing in their own head. Right. You know? To detach from that is, I think, sometimes hard. Right. Okay, so yeah. what is your favorite non-sexual body part? <laughs> non-sexual. About, about my husband or about myself? Uh, <laughs> let's do both. Let's um, do both. Let's do both. Why not both? I love that. You are not specific. Um, for my husband, for Will, let's think. Not, 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 two, not, not the two of us. I mean... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like looking at Taylor, what is it? I don't know. Um, I love Will's calves. I'm a big calf person. Aww. Yeah, is that weird? That's no. non-sexual, right? It's non-sexual. Okay, great. <laughs> Have you noticed Taylor's calves? I also really like his biceps. Yeah, I don't like Taylor's calves. Yeah, neither does he. <laughs> you don't like Taylor's calves? <laughs> What's wrong with his calves? He's got the itty bittiest calves oh, on the so biggest body. There's nothing wrong with like them. He, even when he was huge, his calves were like, they're not scrawny. Yeah, not I. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're little. <laughs> Give it up. Yeah. They're not getting big. All right, least favorite. <laughs> Oh, we're doing least favorite? Yeah, body part? Least favorite parts. Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> why not? Roast him, Charles. <laughs> why not? <laughs> Let me think about this. You gotta have a least okay. favorite. Although, I don't know what Bert's least favorite is. Okay, I'm trying to think of it. I gotta be ready. Um, I know, you don't have to answer yet. Uh, I know, hold on. Give me uh, he has like really, really weird shaped nails, like nail <laughs> beds. His, I, that's not where like I thought you were going with that. Like it's. <laughs> They're like kind of like short and squatty. And he has an insecurity about them. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Will's over there like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's really funny. So. My favorite or least favorite? Favorite. My favorite, I love one's kind of cheesy. One, I love his arm that has all the tattoos on it mm -hmm. because the amount of times I've woken up with it kind of over me is like, that arm so uniquely his, you know Aww. what I mean? Like with the tattoos and stuff, That's like really cute. <laughs> <laughs> really cute. But when we first met, cause I remember it's like, no matter what, it's like, a, that is like burned in my head. Like I bet you I could draw his tattoos on his arm. Like I just really love that arm of his. Um, the other one is I love his chest. His chest really hot. And like, so when he ever, like in off season, if he ever gets out of shape, he's like, am I getting out of shape? I'm like, your chest doesn't look the best. <laughs> that's all I do. And he's like, how are my arms? I'm like, your arms are fine, but your chest is looking great. <laughs> like, that's pretty much how I judge how he looks. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Was that a Bert question, by the way? No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> that was a me. Least favorite. I don't remember one thing about my husband right now. I haven't seen him in like 30 days, so I'm just like, what does he even look well, like? His, cal <laughs> his calves were, his calves were his not calves high His calves are up. super scrawny, <laughs> right. but yeah, he... Honestly, it's not like what he looks like on average, but Taylor does this thing when like, if I'm, sometimes I'll be getting mad at him and he morphs his body into this weird like creature and he kind of chases me with it. <laughs> what? I hate that. <laughs> does that creature have a name other than Taylor or no, Jerry? Jerry. <laughs> but now after listening to this, he will name it and I'll probably see it more and I'm gonna regret even bringing it up. But I'm telling you, Whenever I think of something that I don't like the way he looks, I'm seeing that image in my uh, head. But I don't know anything individually on him I don't like because he's just like... Does he have nice nail beds? He's like a ditto. He just completely morphs all the time. I feel like he's never the same. <laughs> That's so great. So Burr's is biceps favorite. Least favorite is as he's getting older, he's getting really hairy. Um. 
So it's not really a body part, but there's yeah. like hair yeah. in the ear, oh. hair oh, yeah. in between eyebrows, hair all over his back. Oh. And I'm like, oh Lord, how yeah. do we just manage this hair? I have to shave it, which is probably why I don't like it. So yeah. It's my least favorite. But I will tough. give you a Bert question. You ready? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, if your husband had to keep on one item of clothing during sex, what would it be? <laughs> Shoot. Oh, I know what I don't like about him. Oh, what it's do you his, like? <laughs> it is for sure his feet. Oh, his feet. He's got the grossest feet. <laughs> And I'm, and I, okay. You're so strongly feeling about it. And why, I how blocked you it out of my head. Like, I feel like out. it's just like I had to block out they even existed. <laughs> One of his feet, he broke and never did anything about it. So, you know how everybody has a callus on their feet, like here and here? Yeah. His callus is a ball in the middle of his foot. It's one, like, fat callus. 100%. It's disgusting. And so when I see, if he puts his feet near me, I almost, like, get aggressive. I'm like, don't. <laughs> like, do not put your feet near me. Like, I'm almost immediately angry because they're so gross. So shoes would be it. Shoes, immediately shoes. shoes. Feet, socks and shoes. Socks and shoes. Not shoes without socks. <laughs> socks and shoes. As many Both. barriers as I can get. <laughs> A box around his feet. <laughs> I'm really, like, puzzled by this question because there's really not that many articles of clothing. Like, there's just shirt and pants. Well, like, underwear, socks. What if it's pants? <laughs> <laughs> Keep your pants on. Keep your pants on. Keep your pants on. Keep your pants on. We'll figure it out. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's tough. Again, it was a Bert question. question. Okay, yeah. So, no, that might, question might help me. Yeah, right? I did, yeah. That helps you see the light. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, the, the, the cover the toes. I mean, I just feel like it's so weird when you have sex with socks on. That's weird. Right? Is That's weird, right? Okay, thanks. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. If you had your keep- I'm actually okay with it. I wasn't okay with gonna socks be, I would immediately be fine with socks. Yes, I'm fine with socks. Yeah. It's, it's cold. It's cold so, sometimes. Yeah. It's cold. Yeah, it's true. That makes so you guys yeah. both have sex with socks on? Sometimes I have sex I with have, a t-shirt yeah, on. I sometimes I'll put a full past. sweater on, depending how cold I am. <laughs> We've been married for eight years. So situational <laughs> question. Situational question. Yeah, it depends on the night. Right? It depends on the night. All right, let me see if I missed any from Bert. <laughs> Okay, here's one from Bert. I apologize. This one's a little long-winded. Okay, can't wait. If there was one story you could tell that Taylor or Will would say, stop right there, what's the one word that would describe that story? One, okay, so not the story. Not but the story, word. but what's the one word <laughs> that would describe the story that he wouldn't want you to tell? I feel like Taylor tells every story I could ever think of yeah, online. I don't know. Is like, I wish Will they, is ever embarrassed? I, don't I know. wish they were a little bit more humiliated. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, maybe shit. <laughs> <laughs> is that a verb or a noun? <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> I would say would be it because he made me promise not to tell anybody after it happened. <laughs> so I would say shit. Shit, perfect, shit. perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I really can't think of anything. No, Will's, Will doesn't care about. Stories. They don't get embarrassed. Yeah. I, I'm they sorry. Really I feel don't. like I'm disappointing you in the question, Bert's question. No, here. it does no. not. It's his question. No. Uh, my, I, I have the same husband. Not embarrassed. They're not embarrassed. I bet you if I went, I've never watched a full episode of Bustin' with the Boys. Not for any reason I don't fully support it. It's funny. I just, you know, live with them every day. I bet you if I listened to it, he told the story. Oh, yeah. I bet you. I don't think that kid gets embarrassed. That's so Yeah, funny. and my husband also farts on the internet every day. So. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I knew I'd found my tribe. <laughs> now I have 100% sure we are of the same tribe. Well, I've had so much fun talking to you guys. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate Thank you. it. Thanks for having us. You are so wonderful. Um, those guys are incredibly lucky. You are as well. But they, I think they know how lucky they are. Mm. Do you think they know how lucky they are to have found you? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, just from we're getting so. humility <laughs> here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, no, yeah. We're really lucky. Too. I, I mean, yeah. I feel really lucky. But yeah. Well, thank we you both, so yeah. much for spending this time and for being so open and having fun and talking about shit and ugly nails <laughs> and skinny calves. And I'm immediately looking at Will's nails when we go back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you'll be, be prepared to be disappointed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, well, thank you, everybody, who came out to see us. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. It was so much fun. I was so nervous, so thank you for being patient with me while I was nervous. So thank you. Thank you. Have fun. Did everybody get to try some porosos? Yeah. Yeah, it's good, right? It's good stuff. Okay, well, thank you so much. I don't really know how to exit. I think we just get either. up and leave. Okay, all right, bye.